Good afternoon. Lancaster Connects. My name is Ben McClure. I am broadcasting live from my base office today. Uh, today was a little bit of a mess in the morning. I, you know, forgot my laptop bag here at the house. I went to the store. There were a bunch of other things going on. So I came back home, home base. Um, flying solo today. Uh, Jeff, uh, partner in crime here at Lancaster Connects and Gardner's Mattress and More, where we normally broadcast the show. Uh, he is uh, traveling out of town today to visit family. Uh, we hope that he has a safe and successful trip uh, where he's going. So looking forward to uh, having him back next week for the show. Uh, we've got a great show planned today. Really a first of her kind guest, um, or first of our kind, I guess, guest. Um, we're really excited to have uh, them on today. And it's actually a score show. So we've got two guests uh, live in the same place. And um, SCORE is, uh, of course, an organization right here in Lancaster that helps uh, individuals, nonprofits, and other uh, business organizations uh, getting their business either off the ground, getting them funded, uh, getting them the assistance they need to take their business to the next level. So this is maybe our fourth or fifth SCORE-based show. And uh, actually, one of our uh, our score representative, it's her second Lancaster Connect show. So, yeah, we're really excited to talk to them. We'll bring them on in just a moment. Uh, you can watch this show various places. Some of you watch on Facebook. Some watch on YouTube, both Lancaster Connects uh, and the Gardener's Mattress and more Facebook and YouTube channels is where we broadcast live. Of course, you can go to LancasterConnects.com. And uh, as Chris has it there, producer Chris has it there on the screen, uh, slash episodes. It's on the top of the page, Lancaster Connects, uh, the episodes page. You can watch all uh, previous 127 episodes. I think we're on 128 now, or maybe it's 127. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of shows. Um, so uh, a lot of great guests. Again, we, we highlight great people doing great things in Lancaster County. Um, sometimes again, that's nonprofits, charitable organizations, businesses, or just really, really fun and interesting people like today's guest. Um, so, uh, we'd love for you to subscribe or give us a like on Facebook, go to the YouTube channel, give us, uh, you know, hit the subscribe button. Uh, the more people we have subscribing and following and watching, uh, and sharing our content, the more impact we can make in our community. Uh, so. Pretty much it. I think, uh, you know, without further ado, uh, who wants to hear me ramble on, right? Let's bring our guest on. Uh, like I said, uh, we've got Keisha Finney uh, right there on the left of your screen and Beverly Duty representing SCORE. How are you both today? I, great. Great. Good. Yeah, awesome. we're great. Ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm ready to go too. Uh, Keisha, I, I can't wait to dig into your story. When I say first of our kind guest, like you're an artist. I think you're the yeah. first artist we've ever had on Lancaster Connects. Wow, it's an honor then. I'm, <laughs> I'm humbled to, to be the first. There you go. There you go. Well, cool. So um, I, I, we're just going to dig right in. Um, you know, we're going to have your art on the screen. Uh, we'll talk about your art. But like for you, uh, where did your passion for art start? Like, where did it come from? Like, where did, when did you realize that you had a talent and a passion for art? And, you know, kind of what did that look like? So for me, I felt like I really had the passion for art since I had my very first art class in kindergarten, cool. as cliche as it sounds. But yeah, it's it's the first time I remember how impactful my art class was and and where actually one of my murals lives now. And then to having a teacher who I had in high school as well. So it was, yeah. It all started with being in the school setting and and having my very first art class. And where where did you go to school? At Ross Elementary here in Lancaster. So so you were able to go back and and you painted a a, a mural in the in the elementary school. So it's not in the school. It's actually outside. Oh. Um, it was one of the COVID murals that they put out um, a call for in 2020. That's so cool. Yeah. So it's cool for me to drive by it almost every day and see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. Like a lot of school programs, what they cut first are the arts, you know, be that music, uh, art, you know, painting, drawing, sculpture, you know, uh, unfortunately those are some of the programs that get cut first when there's, you know, budget cuts and whatnot. But, um, mm -hmm. man, the, those, 
programs, though, like they shape us. Um, I, yeah. I love yeah. the music my whole life, you know, so choirs and choruses and, and band. And like, I feel like those experiences shape my life. And it, you know, it seems like art did the same, same for you and it's as part of the career for you. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely sad hearing how art was getting cut from, from school just because how big of an impact it did have for me. So it was definitely hard to hear, but also one of the reasons why I do so much work in the community. That's too. great. That's great. So you, you mentioned, um, the elementary school and then you, you mentioned a high school teacher. Did you want to give a high school teacher a shout out that, that? Yeah. Uh, his name is Matthew Lawrence. Okay. He's amazing. Um, yeah. And we actually do events together now and I oh. even sit with him under his tent. So like, yeah, it's like every artist's dream to be working with their artists. Wow. That's true. You're from school. That's so cool. So is uh, McCaskey? McCaskey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really, really cool, man. Teachers make all the difference. They do. They do. So cool. So cool. So uh, what what prompted you then to become an artist professionally? Uh, so it, it was a very long journey. Um, I did art all throughout my years in grade school. Um, but what really... Um, ignited, I guess, that I could be an artist full time was when I started working back at AC Moore actually as a part time job. And I started, uh, just getting back into art and doing, doing more experimenting. And then I found out that painting was something that I was really good at. And then social media became a thing. Mm -hmm. And I started posting my work on there and I got a lot of great feedback from strangers that I didn't know. So wow. that's what made me feel like I could do it full time. And I've seen artists online being able to do it full time. So I was like, this is very tangible if I can see other people doing it. That's cool. That's cool. So I know we were talking pre-show and I've, I've, I've been on your website and, and poked around and, and learned more about your story. But I know there was a moment in time that really kind of defined uh, or, or kind of put you on the path of, of being an artist full time. Would you like to share about that? Yeah. So that the picture that you just showed with the shirt that I was wearing, one of my paintings called The Journey, that was actually uh, one of the first paintings that I created after going through a tragic car accident where oh I was lucky enough to be alive. And that kind of made me kind of find my purpose and take art more seriously. Wow. Wow. So that, uh, I can't really see it, but the, the painting that's on your shirt, is that what the painting is on the, on the picture there or no? Um, no, it's actually just similar color schemes okay. and, uh, just the style of my work that is seen throughout all of my pieces. Yeah. But that, the piece that's on my shirt was one that I did before I did this mural. Okay. Okay. And is that the mural that's outside of the school? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's <laughs> we got to see it. So, um, and I know, I know there was another moment, um, and and we talked about it uh, pre-show. Uh, the um, there was a mural that you painted. Um, you know, it had George Floyd on it and other uh, people on it. Um, can you talk about that and how that propelled your artistic journey? Yeah. So. Um... When COVID happened, which was probably, um, it was, it was in the midst of doing that mural. We had 10 days to do that mural. And then after the mural was shown to the city and put up a few days later, um, the killing of George Floyd happened. Mm-hmm. And then that was the first time in Lancaster that I've ever seen protesting at all in my life. And it was the first time actually being a part of it. Um, so I, I pr- briefly talked to the Lancaster public art um president who was at the time and we were um downtown at an event that was in the art college um grass area that's outside next to the police station and they had um like boards up where people can draw and write words and things like that so we were um just throwing around ideas and decided that we should do a mural and we ended up doing a mural on the next day um, on a big piece of plywood with a stand. And I um, reached out to a few local um, artists of color as well to help me um, collaborate and do this piece together. Um, so that was the amber stand that's showing up in the video there as well that we did right after that. But right. um, when we did the George Floyd mural, we were doing that in conjunction when everybody was protesting in the streets. So 
It was a very powerful day. I was doing interviews that I've never done before. Um, like I was in the newspaper and then like after that, everybody knew who I was. So it was, it was kind of like a hard moment to, to be living in at the time, but also very powerful for art and the message that I was putting across with the work that we did. Wow. So, um, kind of go back to the, the piece itself that you did. You created that with other people and, Mm -hmm. uh, you did it all in one day? Yes. In the blazing sun. <laughs> incredible. And how, yeah. how big is it? You said it's all... I want to so. say it's probably at least eight foot wide. And now it has a big frame that my friend built on the outside of it. Um, So it's maybe like nine feet and it's really big. So we were... After um we finished the mural, we started um asking other businesses if they wanted to host it in their windows. Okay. Just so it could still be seen by the community. So we were traveling it for like a year after that. And then it landed at Christmas Attics where it lives now. Okay. So you can see it inside of Christmas Attics when they have events in there. Wow. Okay. That's really, really cool. So you um I don't know if you saw the comment that came through. You've got a fan, <laughs> Kathleen Sullivan. We're talking about that. We were talking about the shirt. She she wears the shirt. In fact, I think yeah, the there's her picture there. with the shirt on right there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Kathleen. Um, that that's that's really cool. And I, I love that the picture has the shirt on. Yes, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So uh, from there, um, your your artistic journey really just took off. Like you said, you were doing interviews. You were you know, kind of on the artist map, I guess. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So what happened next? Um, so after that, um, things started to open up slowly with COVID. So I had to go back to my part-time job, um, which was a total different mindset than what I was in previously because I had a bunch of time to do art. Um, but eventually I had to take the leap and put in my two weeks notice and I was able to stop working in July of 2021. And that, that was when I went full time as an artist. And then that following month I had a solo exhibit um, with all of my work and previous um, past works that I did, as well as some, a few new pieces just because of the George Floyd mural. I had a big following. So like yeah. all these people never seen my work before. So I was like, I'm just going to do a show with all the old stuff and try to sell it. And it was actually the first time I do it, my, my time doing a solo show, and it was it was really great. That's, I mean, so there, there's so much to unpack. <laughs> we <don't>, yeah, <laughs> we don't have this word for any time, but like, so COVID happened, and you were mm-hmm. basically like unemployed because you couldn't couldn't work, right? Yeah, you had this like large chunk of time, and you decided to take that time and be creative with it. Yes, create artwork, start kind of defining the type of artwork and, and, um, and, uh, and, and then you did this mural and mm-hmm. now you realized, Hey, I've got something here. Um, I can turn this into like, you can turn your passion into a career. And mm-hmm. then you were able to, to, uh, quit your part-time job. That's so, I mean, I love that story. It's so cool. And I mean, COVID was strange and, and difficult for, for a lot of reasons, but um, yeah. it was really kind of a, a moment that you, saw and took an opportunity, the the free time and and did something with it. I, I think that's great. Yes. Thank you. No. Thank you. Yeah. And previously, um, I already had had a score mentor at the time because where my part-time job was, the owner of the salon that I worked at, she had a score mentor. So she told me to get one. Um, so that's how I met Beverly because I needed um, certain documentation or an EIN numbers that I needed for an event. Okay. Um, so I reached out to score and they were able to help me, um, walk through that process. Well, that's a great segue because I was, I was wondering, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, I think of score, you know, it, yeah. helping nonprofits, organizations, um, businesses like ours, we use score 13, mm-hmm. 14 years ago. Um, but as an artist, you're, you're, but you're running a business too and, mm-hmm. and can use the services of score just like any other business. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, so you got involved with Beverly. Beverly, um, maybe you can uh, share a little bit about how that process got started with Keisha. Yeah, sure. Um, so I started with Score just about five years ago, and I think you were one of my very first oh, I clients. Know. I so don't be honest. <laughs> um, and I remember I had to do a bit of research because I was learning too, 
and you were going to go to a craft fair and do your henna mm-hmm. tattooing. So we had to work out the various permits. Um, now you were, were already in business at that point in time, yeah. but it was a question of then how do we grow the business? Where do we focus and so on? And, and one thing that is a pleasure is, you know, you've seen the work that Keisha does. I'm in awe of it because I am not an artist at all. I don't even show my scribbling to Keisha because I'm sure she would have to frown when she sees it. But where I can hopefully help is to help her think about how to use the best of her time for the artwork, but also then to find avenues to sell because it is a business. Yeah. So that's how we started to get together. And then I think we've met probably about 30 times over the last four years or so. Okay. So, um, yeah. yeah, we have a regular touch base. That's that's so great. I, I love you know, what you've been able to do for Keisha and what SCORE does as an organization. Because so often when somebody has a passion, whether it's for art or for uh, some sort of business or they they want to open a restaurant or, you know, whatever it be, you know, often we're, you know, people are really, really good at the thing that they do, you know, the the art, the, you know, pizza shop, whatever whatever it is. Um, but actually running a business is, is really tough. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and there are so many things that, you know, if you've never done it, if you've never opened your own business or had to run a business, you don't know what there is to deal with. Um, you know, and it's, it's really kind of fly by the seat of your pants if you don't have somebody to guide you or, you know, an organization to guide you. And that's, that's what, um, you know, scores so, so good at. And oh, by the way, it's free. <laughs> Yes, I forgot the part. It was free because, you know, free. starting That's out, important. you don't really have money. And yeah. you're just like, yeah. where can I get this information from? I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, taking anything I can get and trying to implement it into my business. So, yeah, I was like, free, sign me up. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, you really, Keisha, you kind of came into this process. You had some really, really cool art. And I, I, I want to talk about your art and like, um, you know, kind of your style and, and stuff like that. I, we've seen... Uh, some of it uh, in this interview so far, but um, starting to work with Beverly and Score, what what was that like for you? Um, I mean, you really probably no business background other than you know working in a business for somebody else and maybe seeing bits and pieces of that. But you know, you really probably had to learn a lot from from Score and Beverly, right? Yes, I had to learn a lot, and what I loved about working with Score and Beverly is that. I could ask any question and not feel stupid about it. And I am one of those people who will ask any question just so I can learn something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I always come to her whenever I have questions. And when we do have our meetups, I, I try to take notes. And there's things that I've taken from every meeting that I try to implement every day that I have set, have to set boundaries for myself too, as, as a business owner and, not just an artist, because I like one thing that I take that I've been doing for the last few years since Beverly told me to is to only do my meetings on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So um, it's really been easy to organize my brain in that kind of way, because when I'm working, I'm just only thinking about the art and not about planning throughout the year and taking big projects and planning around little projects. And that's where a score mentor really helps an artist. Yeah. Yep. There's, there's no shortage of people, uh, pulling for your time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, setting those boundaries is absolutely crucial, you know, setting aside the, you know, like you said, time to do business stuff and time to do, um, the actual work, the, the, the artist stuff. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so can, can you describe your art? I, I, your art is very colorful. Uh, yes, but I know there's there's some themes running through your art. Uh, you know, some some of it we've seen here. Can can you talk about your art a little bit and describe it for us? As and Chris will probably show it in the background. Yeah. Um. So when when I first started trying to sell my art and and actually paint, I feel like it didn't have a style. But was what was always was apparent in each of my work. Um. Was the colors and how vibrant they were. And it wasn't until I did the George Floyd mural that I felt like my work had a voice and kind of like stood for something. Um, so then I was obviously more skilled at that time and could do paint more things. Um, but a lot of my paintings are of women who look like me. Yep. Um, and it's sometimes it's un- unconsciously, like I don't try to do it, but a lot of my paintings have features that look like me. 
Um, but it's just uh, something that I don't really see um, when I go to modern museums or that we were taught in school. I don't really see art that looks okay like me. So I try to paint what isn't there so it can be a part of history. That's really cool. That's really cool. In fact, um, I know you did, and we talked about it pre-show, um, the organization called Patients Are Waiting. Um, yes. You did some murals in uh, in their facility. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think Chris can probably pull up some pictures there. Uh, can you talk about that? About those? Those are recent. You just you just did those last year, right? Yes, it's crazy to say last year because it still <laughs> feels like last year to me. <laughs> I still feel like I just finished that mural. Um, yeah, so that I started that mural back um, at the end of August in the summertime, um, and it's for a nonprofit. Patients are waiting. Um, they help eliminate health disparities in medicine. Um, so in this mural, it's featured. Uh, 20 black doctors and scientists throughout history oh, and man. it's dating all the way back to the 1800s some of the photos oh my gosh Look at that. yeah so some of these photos they're very old and like didn't have a lot of detail or very like grainy looking so like i had to just work with what i saw um so it was that was a challenge in itself um and each of those squares are four foot yeah by four by the way. So this mural ended up being about like over a thousand square feet, which is the biggest mural that I've ever done to date. Um, So it was definitely a process that I learned so much throughout. Um, I did have an assistant helping me as well, um, but I felt like I could have always had more help. (laughs) I feel like we could do a whole show just talking about these pictures. So how long did this take you to do? Let's start there. Um, I'd say like... Maybe like two and a half, three months wow. total. And some days when I first started working on this mural, I was like, I'm going to go in and try to do a person a day. Mm-hmm. That didn't work because I was <laughs> I was in there like 10 hours a day. And by like the fifth hour, I'm already tired and I'm like, I'm not working as hard as I should be. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm just going to try to come back and work in shorter spurts of time yeah. so that I can get more done when I'm actually there and not just dragging my days along. So once I did that and got into a rhythm, I could bust out the people because I mo- I had the, my assistant painted the backgrounds. So like the colors that are in the background of each photo, I didn't paint those. I designed everything, but I didn't paint them. I did help um, halfway through um, so we could catch yeah. up, but um, most of them were painted by the assistant. So I could just focus on the people. Wow. And, and where did, um, where did the idea come from? Is that your idea to do these 20 different people or? Um, no, it was actually Dr. Sharice Hamlin's idea. Yeah. So um, she, every Black History Month, she was posting on her Instagram page and social media, the history of Black doctors. Okay. And they recently rented out this space down in Southern Market so they could um, have events there. Um, they want to do a Saturday school um, where kids can come. They also have um, another thing that they do with um, college students called Pipeline Dreams, where they have um, high school students into this program, bridging the gap between college and medical school. So they wanted to have this space that could be used by everybody um, in the community. Unbelievable. I mean, the pictures are just thank stunning. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And so like the colors and the, you know, the, like the black and white for the people and the colors, like, was that all, is that all you? So yeah, that was on me. So the, a lot of these pictures were old. So some of them weren't in color. So I didn't even know what some of their skin tones Ooh. or anything looked like. So I just had to keep them in black and white. Yeah. And some people there, she's actually alive. That woman that was just on there, Alexa Canaday. Um, she, so she, some of these people are still living um, and some of them have passed, but I think it's awesome. And Dr. Sharice actually knows her. And um, so it's cool to honor these people in this kind of way. That's really, really cool. And was this, um, I mean, it looks like pictures were taken during the process. Uh, mm-hmm. Have you been featured for this artwork in any publications or anything like yes. that? Yes. Um, they uh, they actually did, a, I think, an article for WGL, um, mm-hmm. an interview that they were on the news for it as well, and then in the paper too. So yeah, it's been, we tried to do it at the same time as Extra Give, so it could all be like oh, yeah. one big, yeah. Event. Um, so yeah, so we're and then we're trying to bring back the tours this this month to for Black History Month yeah. as well to get people, more people in the space and who might have missed the tours back when it was finished. That's so cool. I mean, did you ever imagine 
four years ago, three and a half years ago when, when <laughs> COVID hit, that you would do a piece like Bird. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I've always like write notes to myself, like I'm going to be um, a full-time artist one day and things like that. So it's great to see the memories come up on Facebook when I post things like that. Yeah. And to be actually living it now, it definitely makes me appreciate it more than always thinking of the next thing as entrepreneurs do. Yeah. You know, we're always trying to see what's next and yeah. what we have to do next and not be in the moment. So that's so cool. I mean, thank, thank for sharing about that. That's just the, the, the artwork is stunning. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, Beverly. Like I try to draw something. I, I, <laughs> but the, the colors are absolutely stunning. It's, I mean, just, there's the journey. Um, yeah. That's the painting that, that was the on journey. the t shirt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Beverly, I wanted to talk um, uh, or ask you as, as Keisha's mentor, what are some highlights uh, of working together uh, and what Keisha's been able to accomplish as a result of uh, score? Yeah, sure. Mentorship? I, mean, I think it's really tough when you are a solo entrepreneur because you, you're doing everything. Again, we were talking before the podcast started. Yeah. You're doing your social media, doing your accounts, yeah. you know, trying to work out the taxes. So um, some of the things we've tried to work on are what are the various revenue streams that she has? So the the head of tattooing and then trying to plan the year around some of these big events. As you would imagine, those murals took you know, three and a half months. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we've got the online sales as well. We have various commissions. We have um, LGBTQ celebrations, all these types of things, Juneteenth. So really it's around sort of planning the year ahead and then saying, right, if I'm going to be here and yeah. doing this, let's go back a couple of months. What am I actually going to do with the creative stuff? Yeah. So I think just those, the Tuesday, Wednesday thing really worked for you. Yes. Where you can be in your head about the admin that you have to do with the business. Mm-hmm. And then the other day is you can be that free creative person. Yes. Um, so I don't help on the creative side at all. <laughs> it's not my forte. Um, but just that organization and things like, you know, um, you may not be the best person to do your own taxes <laughs> because you're not a tax expert. Yep. No, that's great. That's great. Uh, so you've mentioned a number of things. Um, you sell some of your artwork online. Um, I know mm-hmm. there's everything from the actual paintings to mm-hmm. um, pins and and other items. You want to talk talk about that a little bit, Keisha? Yeah. So I actually almost forgot until I saw him scrolling on my page that I'm actually having a sale this month, fifteen <laughs> percent off. So yeah, if you want to buy some art for for Black History Month and support support me. There you go. You have a cup this month. Um, but yeah, so I try to put my art on a lots of different types of materials um, just so yeah. I can have different price points. So everybody right. is able to enjoy the art is what I like to say. Um, but yeah, so I, I have paintings, prints, pots, and sometimes clothing, uh, t-shirts, sometimes bags when I can get a hold of them. So I try to paint and all of those things. If you have a, a, an event where you need some henna tattoos, I could be there. Okay. So that, that we haven't talked about that yet, but you mentioned it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Henna tattoos, I, I forgive me. I, I kind of know maybe what they are, but like, are you drawing? <laughs> yeah, essentially. So it's like um, drawing a, a tattoo. Henna is a plant that's broken down into a powder. Okay. And then mixed with um, yeah. essential oils and it's all organic. So it's mixed to make a paste and the paste is what stains your skin. Yep. Um, it's, and you kind of see these at the beach, I'm sure, yep. if you go to the beach. Um, but yeah, so I just decided to pick henna up one day because I didn't want to pay for it because I'm an artist and I'm like, I can teach myself how to do this. <laughs> so then I got really good and people started wanting to pay me for it. So then I just added it as a service to my business. That's cool. I- I love that you're just like, I can miss it. <laughs> I just feel like when I'm with, as an artist and creative, I feel like if it's something that has to do with making something, I can probably figure out how to yeah, do that's, it. But then the stuff, that's what I call Beverly for. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep that's cool. Uh, so, um, I mean, again, we, we only have so much time, but um, I know there's other places around town and we saw it in some of the pictures that we're scrolling. Um there's other places around town um, outside that you can see your artwork. Do you want to talk mm-hmm. a, a little bit about some of the other places where uh, somebody could view your your work? 
Yeah. So I'm actually kind of trying to work on an updated website where I can have a map that shows all of my public work. Great idea. I just don't have it yet. So you got me there. (laughs) um, So like I've done uh, a mural and benchmark um, program. That's a a gym where kids can go there and work out for free and they help kids with school, getting jobs. It's a really great place. Um, uh, you can see my mural at a concrete rose. I didn't want in their establishment. Um, Spice Kings um, at Penn State Health. I have a painting in there as well. Okay. Um, some of my work that I've done um, in the past is in the YWCA. Um, Rachel's Cranberries. Rachel's Crabery. I did okay. help with the mural in there as well. Um, I, yeah. I always forget all the things that I've You're done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I did a few of the pianos too, and they do them every year. Um, Solid, unfortunately yeah. they, they change them every year. So they break all the pianos at the end of the year, but I got to keep some pieces of the ones that I made, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I have a lot of work that you can see publicly that, and also you can purchase my work at SO Arts, which is on 317 North Queen street. Okay. It's an art gallery where, um, a bunch of local artists can, um, rent space and have their own brick and mortar without having to worry about all the uh, things that go with the brick and mortar. That's great. That's great. And they, and they, they don't take any commission. You just pay a fee to them and they give you a hundred percent commission. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. You know, when, um, do people reach it? So I'm like thinking Rachel's, for example, Rachel's creepery. Mm-hmm. Did, did they reach out to you and say, Hey, we're so, got this cool idea for our wall and. I was actually an assistant artist on that project. So um, it was in conjunction with Friendship Park Gallery. Um, we the, the year before that, we previously worked with um, the artists and adults at through Friendship Park Gallery. Um, they had mental disabilities. So they created all of the art there. And then um, we kind of, another artist pieced all of their paintings together to make the image that's on Rachel's. And then she hired two other artists to help her um, paint the top half because they painted the bottom. Um, when they were coming each day. So it was a really great to do a community project in that way. And it helps you get the stuff done so much quicker. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do you have any uh, cool projects you're allowed to talk about coming up? Um, yeah. I like that you can put that in there. Cause I have worked about NDAs too. <clears throat> um, I have a, a possible mural that I'm, I'm, I have a meeting this week that I'm going to be doing with Lang- Lancaster country day school. So I'm excited to work with kids and get back into the schools in that kind of way. Um, as well as, um, I have my first meeting for the public art advisory board, board of Lancaster. I was recently accepted last month to be on the board. So I'm excited to see what comes from that position and see how I can help all the other artists like me. And does the kid with Baldwin as well. Oh, yes. I forgot. How could I forget about that? (laughs) So I did receive a grant from the Lancaster Community Foundation. I'm in the Baldwin cohort, uh, the class of 2025. Oh. So my trip is actually coming up in April where I'm traveling to Sedona, Arizona. And then um, in December, I'm also going to Art Basel in Miami for the first time. So that's a big art festival that they do every year. And I haven't gotten a chance to go. I've always seen it since I started trying to sell my stuff on Instagram. So I was like, I need to get there yeah. one day. And this is the perfect like opportunity. That's cool. And and what is the opportunity going to a place like that? Are you taking some of your artwork with you and looking? I I'm not sure. Um, so I feel like it's so far ahead that I and I've been in connection with other artists on social media who live there and other galleries who put calls out. So I'm hoping maybe I can get a piece down there when I'm there. But if not, I'm all for just going to experiencing it and then going in later years and and eventually hoping helping that would be the goal to have some work there. That's very cool. That's very cool. So, um, upcoming events, like, are there places where you're going to be, uh, that people can meet you? And I, I think maybe you have a, a, a henna thing coming up and our strawberry <laughs> for pride fest, maybe, I think. Yeah. So pride fest that's coming up in June, uh, this summer. I'm, I'm always, I always do that as well as, um, celebrate Lancaster. You can always catch me there doing henna. Yeah. Um, okay. Those yeah. are two big events that I try to do every year, um, as well as um, this month we're doing the tours for patients are waiting of uh, the Black Doctor Factory. So if you have cool. a group of people and you want to book a tour, you can come down and see us and I'll, I will give you a tour personally and talk about the process of the mural and what they do as an organization. 
Um, what else am I doing this year? Other than the Baldwin trips, I'm trying to take this time this year to to create more work to have in my personal inventory, which I haven't been able to do in the last three or four years, if you've been following me, because I've been mm-hmm. doing so much everywhere else. Right. So I'm trying to make more work that I can um, possibly um, apply to other galleries out of state and have my work travel. So yeah. expanding is my goal. That's cool. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what what is kind of your, your vision? Like, if you're looking five years, 10 years down the road, do you have any, like, goal you are working towards or... It's always a hard question. I feel like when you yeah. ask an artist or entrepreneur, because their <laughs> life is always everywhere. So I never really know, but I do write goals every year of things I want to accomplish as an artist. Um, and that's like creating more consistently, getting my work out of state, which I actually have a piece right now that's in North Carolina. So oh, cool. that already happened this year. Right. So I'm excited to see what else happens then. Um yeah, and just be more intentional with myself and do more things for myself and just grow. I feel like I never really want to put a thing on exactly what I'm going to do, but yep. I'm always doing a lot. You can count on that. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, I, I hope... But if you in the map of where her artwork is, I think we can say that Keisha's safety on the map herself. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the exposure she's getting with the public arts advisory board and so on. And, and you know, you did something with Ponza uh, at the end of the last year. Yeah. So yeah. lots of things you see around. All this, I, I'm trying to guide it, just try and limit how much, because you could be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's, um, I think you're safe to say you're, you're on the map personally, but I am. Um, I am. Well, I, I can't wait for the day when, when you have artwork all over the world and we can be like, yes. <laughs> she, back in the day, she was on like a X. <laughs> that's the goal i will I promise i will not forget you guys <laughs> so uh so yeah we're, we're yeah i mean there's there's so much we could talk about um I, I guess our time has to wrap up here a little bit um is there anything else keisha that you'd like to to talk about here on the show i think you covered it pretty well i mean like you said we could we could keep asking questions yeah. and be talking all day but <laughs> yeah i I'm glad that you had me here today and oh. I really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, me too. Uh, Beverly, I did want to ask, um, you know, kind of wrapping up the the SCORE side of things, um, is there something you'd like everybody to know about SCORE and the opportunity that people have with SCORE? Oh my gosh, there's so much. Yeah. Um, but we are around 80 strong, 80 mentors mm. strong. Um, some of us are retired, some of us are not retired. But what we all have is a passion to help our small business um, community. Mm-hmm. Here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to reach into all areas of the community to help, but you know, the di- wonderful diversity that is Lancaster. Um, we do mentoring and we do education sessions, and you know, we're here to help. Um, so please have a look at our website. I know you got up on the screen there. Uh, we have a passion to help, and as you said earlier, it's free. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a phone call, an email is worth it. And then you'll get, you know, an executive that can really help you make a difference mm-hmm. and help you grow your business. So please reach out. Don't hesitate. A phone call is all it takes. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, is that the best way to get started? Uh, either picking up Either do that. Or... You, can, you can ring us. We're now situated actually at the Lancaster Chamber yep. of Commerce. So we are actually re- re- really downtown. Uh, or use the uh, address that's on the screen there, yeah. the score.org yep. forward slash Lancaster hyphen Lebanon. We're here to help and here to make a difference to our community, which we're we're very proud of. And uh, for us, it's an honor to work with people like Keisha yeah. and help her, you know, navigate her paths. Yeah, there's a lot of local businesses that you wouldn't think have a score mentor, yeah. and they do. And one thing with Beverly is if she can't answer the question, she will find the answer for me. It's a great from point. somebody, yeah. So yeah. she will find the answer for for whatever question I have to. Great point. Across eighty plus mentors, yeah. you name it, somebody out of that eighty people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's so great that I mean, Score is a national organization, maybe even global. Um, but we it's have sure. we have one of yeah. the very best chapters right here in Lancaster. So it's such yeah. a great resource. And Beverly, thank you for all that you do uh, for, for Keisha and everybody else that you mentor and uh, the Lancaster business community in general. 
Welcome. Very, very cool. And uh, Keisha, thank you for, for sharing um, about your business, your artwork, um, the passion you have for it, um, telling some of your stories. Um, I think we'll, we'll transition into our connection cocktail, maybe get to know you each a little bit better here. Um, <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> All right. So um, we asked the tough questions here. Well, we'll Keisha, you can go first. Uh, describe your best quality in one word. Oh, see, it's always hard because I'm I'm not one to like to talk about myself. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I I actually have been working on this in my Baldwin cohort, so I'm gonna say determination. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like my will to always get things done, no matter what I'm going through. Yep. I always find a way somehow. Yep. I don't know how I do all these things that I do, but <laughs> I figure it out. And even if I'm crazy sometimes, but I do it. So yeah, I'm really fond of my determination. That, that's a great word. I mean, those 20 murals inside yeah. patients are waiting. I mean, that, that I, I can't imagine painting that in years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah it's society makes you feel like you got to work so fast now it's like they used to yeah. paint paintings 10 years for one piece back then so <laughs> it's a whole different world today beverly same question for you well i was asked that when i was 21 when i left college and applied for my first job and the word i chose then i would still use now and it's purposeful mm. oh that, i so, love that have a purpose yeah 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 Come yep. on, you were burning at 21. I wish I wasn't doing that at 21 about my purpose. <laughs> All right. And last question, same for each of you. Um, we often talk about like favorite things to do in Lancaster, but we're going to narrow it down to favorite thing in winter since we're like pretty much <laughs> smack dab in the middle of winter. Now it's beautiful and sunny outside. We had a gorgeous day yesterday on Sunday, but often it's gray and dreary and cold. And so... What's your favorite thing to do in winter? I'm not going to lie. I kind of hibernate in winter. I don't really go out. So <laughs> when I have events, I do go out. But this year, I've been liking going to open mic on Wednesdays at Concrete Rose because okay. it gives me a reason to go outside. And I get to see a lot of people in the community and people make me read my poetry there. And I don't like doing it, but they just always keep asking me. So I just have to do it eventually. So it gets me out of my comfort zone. So I like doing that. That's this cool. winter, that's what I've been liking to do. So... I mean, again, you <laughs> just leave the work. What don't I do, right? What, no. what don't I do? What, I don't know. What, what was the place called? Concrete Rose? A Concrete Rose, yeah. And where is that? That's um, 910 South Duke Street in Lancaster. Okay. And it's open mic, so it's like people doing music, reading poetry, a little bit of everything. All of it. Yeah. That's so cool. My my daughter, she's 14. Um he yeah, writes poetry, and she was actually reading some of it to us last night. I'm like, that's that's really good. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's cool. So like, anybody can come and listen and participate. Mm -hmm. Yep, very cool. Yeah, you'll have to check out their website. They have it um, every Wednesday. Sometimes they do poetry slams here and there, and they they do a bunch of different family type of events as well. Very cool, very yeah. cool. And Beverly, same question for you. Um, I'm a volunteer at the Fulton. Theatre, Fulton Ambassador. I think I saw Joseph five times, yep. which is just amazing, really mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, and we go again on this Thursday to see the latest production. So I just love doing that. And I really love the kids' shows on Saturday morning mm -hmm. with the you know, great big eyes watching all these things <laughs> <happen> <laughs> on stage. So I have a love of, of the arts and dance and music. Mm -hmm. I rubbish yes. out anything to do with painting. But I, but I admire it. We so, need people uh, to yeah. admire it, though. We yeah. need people to admire it. So, yeah. so yes, yeah. the big. Very yeah, cool. so that's, that's what I love to do. Yeah, Fulton. What a what an amazing venue uh, for yeah. the community to you know right right in downtown it's, Lancaster. Well, yeah, Keisha and Beverly, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being on, um, Keisha. We, I, I mean, this has been great to tell your story. Um, before we, we gotten, um, you know, invited you as a guest, um, I really didn't know anything about you or your artwork. And it's really, really cool to see what you've been able to do in a short period of time. And I really, uh, hope that, you know, um, the next steps for you are just fantastic. Um, I, you know, thank you. Wish, thank you. Wish you it really means a lot. What's that? I said that really means a lot. I yeah. appreciate that. Yep. Yep. Good luck in the, the events you've got coming up here this year. So. 
Thank you. Thank you. And good luck to you guys on all of your storytelling. And I'm excited to look more into all the episodes that you've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give, her, give us a look. And, and if you've got a word with the uh, patients are waiting folks. Yes, I, I will. I will put a, a bug in their ear. And let there you go. I know we've reached, <laughs> know we've reached It'll out. It'll be the perfect so. time. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank rest you. of your afternoon. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank See you. All right. I mean, what a what a great story. Um, and this is this is why we do the show. Um, you know, when when Jeff and I got started on this journey, I mean, it's almost four years ago, three years ago, whatever it was. Um, you know, Lancaster connects, trying to connect the community, uh, to each other. Um, you know, um, highly great people doing great things in this, you know, community we call home here at Lancaster. And, um, I mean, what a cool, what a cool story, uh, that was, um, Keisha and the, the her artwork is just beautiful. And, uh, kind of the events of the last few years has inspired, uh, the artwork. And, uh, you know, now you can see her artwork all over town. Um, and, and of course, as always, um, during these score shows, a shout out to score and the impact that they have on our local businesses, Gardner's mattress and more, uh, included. So, uh, thank you to Beverly. Thank you to Keisha. That was, that was great. Uh, don't have much to wrap up the end of the show here. Um, I did want to share a testimonial that we had come in. Uh, to gardeners recently, as you can see, a handwritten testimonial there. Yes, people still do get out a pen and a piece of paper. We give these uh, to our customers and they're nice enough to share some words and send it back to us. So I just wanted to share. Uh, normally, we ask people, um, you know, what do they think about our process to help them match their sleep needs to uh, a mattress that best suits their need? And um, this person said, Victoria said it's perfect. Uh, I did not know what was best until I went through the process with Drew. Uh, so again, our process to help, you know, everybody is kept up by different things. You know, some people snore, some people have reflux, some people have back pain. You know, there's some, some of the testimonials there on the screen. Um, you know, some people, their partners flip and flop and that keeps them up at night. So our goal, our, our job really is to, to flush that out. Uh, see, uh, uh, determine what those sleep needs are and then match the person best to those sleep needs. Uh, and we feel we're really, really good at it. Um, the, uh, experience was amazing, uh, from beginning to end. Uh, they, this Victoria has already been bragging to everybody about the mattress, her mattress and telling everyone that Gardner's is the place to go. So, uh, thank you, Victoria, for the, uh, nice handwritten testimonial there. And again, we're Gardner's mattress and more. Uh, the business I co-own with uh, my partner, uh, Jeff Janakovo, uh, who's out of town today, but we'll be back next week. Uh, we're on Plaza Boulevard behind Park City Mall. And it is really the, um, the, the, it, uh, our ability to do this show is, is a result of, uh, Gardner's Mattress Award. We're, we're blessed with a great staff and great customers that say some nice things about us. Uh, like this testimony I heard. So thank you, Victoria. Thank you to all of our customers. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, we are lined up with guests for the next, actually, few months. I think we're into April now booking guests, which is just awesome. Um, sometimes we're reaching out to businesses and organizations that we think would be great to have uh, featured on the show. And then there are more and more people that are reaching out to us and saying they'd like to be on the show. Uh, which is just really, really cool. So, um, we, we, uh, we love to tell these stories. And if you'd like to be one of these stories featured on Lancaster Connects, just go to lancasterconnects.com slash guest. Chris has it up there on the screen. Fill out a really simple form. Tell us who you are and why you'd like to be on the show and why it's a story that would be great to have featured on Lancaster Connects. And we'll go through the process to get you on. Um, so again, we're always looking for unique stories. Uh, often we have, uh, organizations, nonprofits, charitable organizations, other businesses like us, like Gardner's Mattress and more smaller locally owned businesses. And of course, now an artist, um, such a cool, uh, experience to have Keisha, uh, Finney on the show and, uh, to talk about, uh, her artwork and her journey 
And of course, the business that she's been able to build with the help of SCORE uh, right here in Lancaster and, and her mentor, Beverly. So I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, catch us next week, Mondays at two o'clock. So we got a great show uh, next week. I won't, won't share who the guest is yet, uh, but we got a great show that we look forward to telling another story right here on Lancaster Connects. Have a great day.